In this video, you'll learn how to die strike a sterling silver ring with a Potter USA hydraulic press and impression die. This particular design is an art deco ring with a three millimeter stone setting in the center. First, we're going to begin with 12 gauge sterling silver sheet and the impression die. Here, I've cut the silver sheet to the rough shape of the ring leaving extra on all sides, and I'm pressing it with a hydraulic press and a small piece of urethane. I'm also using a tool steel pusher on top of the die. Here I'm using the humpback ring kit, also available from Potter USA. This is a specially shaped pusher that conforms to the humpback shape of the impression die. Now I'm combining the humpback ring pusher with a small piece of urethane, so that I can get down into the deepest part of the die and pick up as much detail as possible. Just going to press it a couple of times to see how much detail I can get in this initial pressing. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop the stamping out and I've got a good outline it looks like down on this end I missed a bit of the shank, but I have enough material here that I should be able to salvage it. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my bench pin and trim off a lot of this excess material. I still have quite a bit of thickness because I began with 12 gauge sheet and I can use the thickness of the material to push down into the die, so I don't need all of this excess on the edges. Here you can see how much excess metal I've trimmed off, and now we're going to repress in the die following the same steps we followed before. Here I'm just pressing the shank portion of the ring. And now I'll focus on the central portion of the ring. Again, using the humpback ring kit, that specialized pusher conforms right to the shape of the ring. So this is concentrating the force into the area that I'm placing this urethane because I'm trying to pick up the detail in the center of the ring. It's important when using all of these tools that everything is centered within the press. Okay, so you can see how I'm using the humpback ring former and a piece of urethane together. So you can see how I've gotten more down into the central portion of the ring. I've gotten a little bit deeper, but I'm not picking up the detail of the die yet. So we're gonna come over to the annealing pan and anneal this silver making it soft and malleable so we can pick up the rest of the detail in our ring die. I'm going to just go ahead and heat this up to annealing temperature and then I'll pickle it and clean it and make sure it's nice and dry before I put it back in my impression die. Okay, that looks pretty good. And after pickling, cleaning, and drying, I'm ready to put it back in my impression die and repeat all of those steps that we did before. This time, I'm adding an additional pusher. This is just a small clump of brown paper, like a brown paper bag. And it's gonna act as a slightly more solid pusher than the urethane because the urethane flows under pressure and takes the path of least resistance while this paper is gonna act as a more solid kind of force behind the metal. And you can see that it just completely obliterated that paper, but that's fine. It helped apply pressure in that lower area. See how much more detail in the die I was able to pick up this time using the paper? I think I can get just a little bit more detail out of the die though, so I'm gonna use a very small piece of urethane and the tool steel pusher um, and the high humpback ring former. This is a deeper humpback ring former than the one that comes in the kit. And this is just going to really focus the pressure on that central portion of the ring. And then we'll pop it out and check it out and see if we were able to get all of the detail. 
Okay, so that looks pretty great. I like the detail that I have there. I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be piercing out these interior cuts um, in the central portion of the, the stamping where the stone goes. And then also there's a small portion on either side on the shank that is gonna need to be removed. So here I'm using a very small drill bit um, and I'm drilling holes in each area that I'll need to pierce out with my jeweler's saw. This drill bit is, um, I can't remember exactly what size it is, but it's approximately the same size as 20 gauge wire. So just under one millimeter in diameter. And whenever I have interior cuts like this on a piece, I like to do the interior cuts first before sawing off the excess material from around the perimeter of the stamping. Um, when I leave that extra material there, it's giving me more metal to hold on to while I do those interior cuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those inner cuts first and then I will move on to piercing the outside of the ring. When you're doing really small interior cuts like this, it's important to use lubrication, use fine saw blades, and to take your time. Now here, I'm working on starting the perimeter of the ring, so I'm cutting off the excess material from the outside of the stamping. Once I've removed all the material with my saw, I'm ready to move on to filing and sanding. Here I'm using a PSA sanding disc to just further refine the edges of my ring. And then once I've finished it up, I'm ready to actually shape this ring and get it soldered closed. I'm gonna try to shape it, um, but remember we just finished die striking this and this metal is super hard. This is gonna make my life difficult, so I'm actually deciding that I need to anneal this in order to bring those ends together for soldering. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the torch to bring this up to annealing temperature, making the metal soft enough that I, soft enough that I can bend it um, and bring the ends together for soldering. So now the metal is nice and soft and I'm able to bend it a lot more easily. I'm not worried about getting this ring round right now. All I'm worried about is bringing the ends together so that I can get a nice tight fit for my soldering. And the ring was just a little bit bigger than I want it to be, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove some material from the ends of the shank here. And I'm just gonna do that with my jeweler's saw and then I'll bring those ends together and get it soldered. All right, so I've removed the amount of material that I want to for the size ring I need, and I'm just gonna use a hammer to tap down these ends and bring them together nice and tight and flush. Making sure you have a nice tight fit will make soldering much easier for you and it will ensure that you have a stronger solder joint so you don't risk the ring popping open um, after you've soldered it and when you're forming it round. Okay, so I've got a nice tight fit and I'm ready to go over to the soldering station. I'm gonna make sure I flux my seam. And then I have a few chips of hard solder available nearby, and I'm gonna begin heating. Once the flux has calmed down, I'm gonna go ahead and add my little tiny solder pallions right on the seam and then heat until the solder flows. So 
So my solder flowed, but it looks like I could use just a tiny bit more on the bottom end of this ring. So I'm gonna add another piece, heat it till it flows, pickle it, clean it, and then come back to the ring mandrel for shaping. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm using a nylon mallet. This is a, a fairly firm plastic, but it's not going to mar my metal and it's not going to stretch my ring. You can also use a rawhide mallet if you don't have a nylon mallet. So I'm just rotating this on the ring mandrel, rounding it out, and it's nice and round now, but it's not flat, it's a little wonky. So I'm gonna put it on a steel bench block and make sure I flatten it out. And then my final step is just to do final filing, polishing, sanding, and then I have my finished completed ring. Here I set a three millimeter garnet in the center, um, but you can set whatever you like. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out our YouTube for more.